Crow Wheel here. Today we review a porter and discuss decolonization. Hello and welcome to Beer and Conversation with Pigweed and Crow Hill. Good evening, Pigweed. Good evening, Crow Hill. Uh, what's on your mind today? Francisco Macias Neguema. Ah, uh, okay. Fran Francisco, that's easy. Macias, yeah. all right. Yeah. Neguema. Well, mm, it's like a nguema. Okay, nguema. Uh, yeah, all right. There you go. See, he was a pioneer in decolonization. Oh, I've been hearing so much about that. Yeah. From from our most prestigious universities and even on TEDx. Yeah, 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 me too. So I thought we'd take a look at this guy's life, what it means to decolonize. And okay. Then we might have some advice for these future leaders of America. Okay, that sounds like a good idea, but I'd kind of like to drink a beer first. Well, wouldn't I? Yeah, that's, that's you usually, all usually on the agenda. Okay, so we have a jailbreak. Hey Porter, hey Porter, and so uh, and I would call this probably a robust Porter at six five. Six five is probably a robust Porter. Uh, well, yeah. it's, generally, you're in four to five and a half. Yeah, yeah. That so would be it's, normal. it's got a little, a little extra something, something. Uh, it's local, just down right, the street, right up the street, and they've and they've got um, a, on the cover. They've got a microphone, a guitar, and a stool. So I'm wondering if it's supposed to be like Cole Porter. I, I'm I'm thinking it's yeah. got some musical something. What did hey, he play? Porter. Did he play piano? Yeah, yeah. I don't. I'm not sure what Cole Porter played, but anyway. So hey, Porter, Porter. Yeah, I'm already suspicious about the head on this thing. Yeah, it, it went away fast, really fast. Yeah, that's usually and not good. It's super bubbly. I mean, it's like tiny, tiny little bubbles that disappear. When bubbles disappear quickly, that's usually a bad sign because, like, like if you pour a Coke. The bubbles disappear quickly. That, exactly. That's exactly what I thought. I said, this thing looks like a Pepsi. Yeah. And when you pour a beer, the bubbles usually stay a little longer. So, so after our hiking trip the other day, we went we went to lunch and our, our, our friend looked at that big 22 ounce beer of mine and it had all that lacing. He I says, know. He said, is that lacing? I said, yeah. He says, well, what does that tell you about a beer? And I'm like, it tells you something about the carbonation. And yeah, the head tells you about the head. But the other thing that I objected to about those 22 ounce beers is I think we got about 19 ounces and three ounces of head. On <laughs> yeah, I, I know. <laughs> I was like, I could have just got the 16 and I probably would have got the same amount of beer. It's probably. But yes, yeah, so, so there's nothing resembling lacing. Mm -mm. Head's gone very quickly. And yeah, so that's a strike against you guys. I'm, I love you, Jailbreak. You're great guys, but you do need to work on the head retention here. Maybe add a little wheat or something. The flavor is um, has a robust porter flavor to it. It's a strong it's nice, flavor. Like, but I can't get over the, 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 how, look at it. Look at it. it yeah. Really, it's a it's like a semi flat mm -hmm. Pepsi. Tiny bubbles that disappeared in no time, guys. Yeah, the flavor is right. The flavor is good for a ro robust porter. The flavor is dead on. But you got to work on the head retention. So there you go. All right. So in order to get to decolonization, I thought, well, let's find a model, somebody who actually decolonized his own country. So you can't, you have people, you know, what academics does that mean, and stuff. By the way, decolonize. We'll, we'll find out. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> so we are in the nation of Equatorial Guinea. Yes, which I think it was just called Equ uh, Spanish. Spanish Guinea or okay. something like that. Yeah. And as you and might expect. It's a little confusing because there's a Equatorial Guinea and there's a Guinea, something Guinea in South America. Well, we had this trivia night. There are three countries. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so there's one in South America and then there's New Guinea in Australia. <laughs> right. Yeah. Australia. So Guinea, what the heck is yeah. going on? Well, we Guinea? didn't come up with I, the third one. I know. Yeah, two was... out of three. Anyway, so it's, I guess this is the one that sits on the equator, I'm okay. guessing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Equatorial kind of is a good Okay. Clue. And it's over here on the on the Atlantic side, right in the uh, the armpit of Africa. And that, right. I don't mean that in a disparaging way. Right. Just the, Although I might. Just, yeah. <laughs> just kind of looks, like like yeah, looks like that little crevice in there. Yeah, that little area And who's north? i got a couple of countries north and south. We've got... Uh, Yes, yeah, so Cameroon, Gabon, and uh, what's what's to the east? And we've got our favorite. Uh, we've got the Central Democratic Afri Republic of Congo. Right, yeah. and the Central African Republic. Right. And I'm not sure what that piece is. So that gives you an idea approximately where it is in the world. It's anyway, it was Spain's only African colony. Okay. I guess they figured they already colonized one and a half continents. So uh, maybe yeah. we'll just... <laughs> we don't need to go so much <laughs> on that other yeah. one. We'll just, we'll just take this one little slice over here. Yeah. And uh, they moved in, and this is, you know, whatever, the 20s or something, I think. Really? Yeah. 
Not recently. Right. Okay. And then by you know, by the by the sixties, their run was over. Well, there was a lot. There was a lot of decolonization or getting rid of the colonizers after World War II. Yeah. Because so many European countries were bombed to hell, and they didn't have a whole lot of resources. And it was a great opportunity for people to say, okay, never mind. Maybe it's a time for... Yeah, maybe it's know. a time for us to get out of here, yeah. But they didn't want to... But none of them left entirely because all of the all of the decolonized African countries, the, Sp the, the French ones st still speaks French and have closer ties mm -hmm. to France, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and all that. So, so here we have the one Spanish-speaking one, and... Uh, there is a young fellow named Francisco Macias Nguema. And I think he got the name Macias because he was educated by the by the Jesuits or something like that? Yeah, so he went to Catholic school, yeah. and even though he was a part of the Fang tribe, mm -hmm. spoke whatever they spoke, he learned Spanish mm -hmm. and got himself a little mid-level government job of of course, it took him four times to pass the civil servant exam. Yeah. Gives you a little hint of who we're dealing yeah, with yeah, here. Right. But he was corrupt right from the core and used his ability to speak both languages to, you know, accept bribes. Yeah, there was an interesting... So we listened to this podcast about this guy, Real yeah, Dictators. Real and, Dictators. Yeah. And um, there was this interesting thing where he would be translating between the two people and he would he would translate it however was to his advantage to translate it <laughs> right who basically whoever paid him the most yeah you, you get a favorable or unfavorable translation, translation of yeah. what the other guy was saying yes that's so right. he was kind of a dirtbag from the start yes uh and but he sung the the praises of the Spanish Empire, yeah, and he he, he, he learned he book. learned certain learned certain things he was supposed to say, like patriotic sayings or oh, something or other yeah. about the Spanish. Oh, basically, this guy is the Spaniards were like this is a man of influence because all the uh, the locals are paying attention to him, and seems relatively competent, and sort of moved his way up the up the ladder, and then when the decolonization movement got going. He sorry, he was he was you know court translator mm -hmm. and then uh, some some civil servant and then they they installed him as mayor right and they said okay so when they were getting ready to pull out they're going look this guy loves the Spanish Empire we can pull out and still maintain right right we keep our toe in there because yes. we got this guy because we got side, the right, right guy yeah here. yeah and he wins the first election and last election sorry <laughs> had to, spoiler yes. <laughs> Democratically elected dude. Yes, democratically elected yeah. dude. I mean, what could go wrong? And then the whole decolon. Then he sort of comes in full decolonization. <laughs> right, boys and girls. This is this is this is how it works. Reminds me a little bit of uh, uh, the Mo Life of Brian skit, where <laughs> where, where the the, where Jew the Jews are sitting around saying, "What have the Romans ever done for us?" Okay. And uh, and, and one of them says, well, there's the aqueduct. Okay, okay, great. Yeah, so and, there's the and there's sanitation. All right, so, okay. So and there's things. irrigation. All right. And there's medicine. And there's the roads. And there's public baths. And there's safety. And there's education. <laughs> and they say, okay, other than the aqueduct, sanitation, <laughs> irrigation, medicine, roads. <laughs> it's a great yeah, skit. it is a great skit. Yeah. And so what he does is he, he keeps it real. He says, when I say decolonize, I mean decolonize. Yeah, he, he's not going for one for half measures. No, no, he, so he, he, he starts uh, renaming cities and streets. Right. Mmm, sounds yeah. familiar. Yes, yeah, so it does sound Probably familiar. got rid of some statues. Probably pulled down some statues, uh, yes. yes. And some portraits of, yes. uh, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. But he didn't just stop there. No. No, no, no. He said, you know what else is medicine? <laughs> Education. <laughs> right. So, uh, just basically... Any intellectuals, any educated people, or anybody who's even wearing glasses yeah. have clearly been corrupted by the... Because we got all that stuff from the colonizers. Yes. It must be bad. So anything that you've gotten from the colonizers, and that includes bread, tomatoes, <laughs> sugar, <laughs> milk. Right. Right? So, yeah. uh, so we just need to get rid... And then now let's get rid of the foreigners themselves. And so there was like 7,000 yeah. Spaniards. And what are the... Did the Spaniards have any particular skills? <laughs> well, actually, you know, it occurs to me, maybe we should back up just a little bit and mention what kind of grievances the people had against the Spaniards. All right. Because, because the, the Spaniards weren't 
the nice, oh, no, they, the they, nicest they, overlords. They weren't the, the malevolent. I mean, I mean, they weren't the most benevolent. No, no, overlords. They weren't the most benevolent, and they said that only certain, only Spanish people could have certain luxuries, and only Spanish people could do certain things. So, so they obvi- there obviously was but you, right, legitimate you could, grievance. You could ach- you could achieve the level of near Spanish citizenship, which he did, if you jump through a bunch of hoops. If you right, right. yes, speak Spanish, you have to be a Catholic. Mm-hmm. You know, you mm-hmm. have got to keep your hands off the white women. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that's right. So the Spanish were not like some model wonderful no, they uh, were, landlords, right? And, and all the, the all this infrastructure that seri- that improved the nation was set by a lot of forced labor. Yes, right. So so they were not nice guys. They, they brought in no, some they, things. There's definitely legitimate grudges. There were legitimate grudges. No question about it. Legitimate grudges. So there was some legitimate reason to say, let's get rid of these guys and run things on our own. Okay, that's fine. But then this guy comes in yeah. and he's, he's a great decolonizer and if Not we, by half measures, like we <laughs> like we hear from a lot of the American decolonizers. He's he says anything that we got from the Spanish has got to go. We're gonna re-Africanize. Yeah. Okay, so do you mean things like yeah, like medicine and education? Exactly. Yes. Yes, I do. Wow. Yes. That's pretty hardcore. So these when these when the Spaniards and and all West or foreigners are being kicked out when they're which. Which being kicked out is not so bad compared to what's to come. Yes. And now these people just happen to know how, where all the keys are and how electricity works, and right. So yeah. So so he's he's taken the people who actually. It's kind of like it reminds me of when Patton uh, was in Germany, and. They were accusing him of not following the denazification program, and he was like, "Well, they know how to run the, <laughs> the electric <laughs> yeah. system." Yeah, you know? and, and guess what? We have a rockets program back home that we could really use some help on, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So, the, a lot of the people who were the Spanish, the administrators, and the engineers, and various people, <laughs> knew, everybody knew how things ran. That's that's how the society held together. But no, 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 no. We have this ideological test. We're going to say, get out of here. Yes. So, and not just get out of here. Maybe we'll just shoot you. Yes. We'll get out. Yes. Get out of here soon. And so then the people who did not get out, uh, you know, the teachers, the engineers, all these people are just re- replaced by. Of course, you had to be Fang with the which is was his ethnic group, right. and then. Yeah, then the min- the minister of culture and engineering is just like a cousin. Could you we know say, I mean? could we say as a general rule? I don't, I don't know enough about this to be sure, but could we say as a general rule that once you get rid of the colonizers, you resort to or revert to tribal loyalties? Yeah. Well, yeah. The tribal yes. Well, the tribal loyalties is you know, a big deal there and in the Middle East, uh, which. Instead of a belief in a nation state, right. we're all it goes back to a Gabunians yeah. or whatever. You're right. you're that second. Yeah, your allegiance is to your tribe first. Right. Yeah, and that doesn't help when you when you're looking for the best and the brightest. Yes, and then and then he keeps withdrawing it further and further until you actually have to be a blood relative <laughs> to have any to have any power or influence, and that goes. The guy was exactly more than a, as well as you think it would. More, he was more than a bit of a lunatic. And in and, and the top of all that, he apparently was a drug abuser. And yes, there, there's some home grow. So there's local weed, which he's massive quantities. Yeah. But there's also a local hallucinogen. Yes. Which that he he's takes. really big on anyway. Yeah. So in the real dictators, they say, because they in real dictators, they've done a lot of uh, African monsters like uh, Gaddafi in Mugabe. And, you know, right. he's like, wait, wait, wait. He's not in their league. This is the least educated, least inspiring individual who's ever run a country. <laughs> There's no coherent ideology, no civic duty, no responsibility to his people, no no political views. There's narcissism, which isn't unusual amongst sure. dictators, yeah. uh, but it's not backed up by anything. There's nothing behind it. Everything else is just absence. So, so this is like the guy. A least talented person. Yes. Or a very, I mean, he had a little a tiny bit of talent, but a very, very middling talent guy who just believes all the world of himself. And, and that's not 
an exaggeration because he ends up <laughs> declaring himself like the savior of the country. And yes, the, the, he's for the before he closes down the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church prayer starts with, yeah. you know, God gave us Messias to give us. Uh, yeah. you know, and I, I listened to that section and I was thinking, what bishop was such a pansy that he went along with this well, and said, yeah, I, sure, we'll put this I in the liturgy. Probably the fifth bishop. After the other ones were shot. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so here we are. We're. we're he kills two thirds, executes two thirds of the parliament. Uh -huh. uh, all of the people people are trying to escape left. You know what they right. call that, by the way, when you kill two thirds of the parliament? What's that? A good start. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, so one of their only industries is a fish is the fishing industry. Yeah. And he does what? Well, he gets rid of all the boats because people were <laughs> people were fleeing on boats, so he destroys all the boats. Yeah. So he actually ends up killing. As, as a percentage of his country, more than Stalin, which is wow. not an easy thing to that's do. Not, that's, that's, a, that's up there in the high ranks. So, so finally, he, uh, he decides to take all the money. I mean, little, go to the treasury and say, give me all the money. Right, which is kind of funny because nowadays we think of money as ones and zeros on computers. Right. Where apparently at this time money was bills and coins and other <laughs> yeah, kinds of things. Right. Just stack, right. He Skids puts it all on a cart and hauls it off into, into yes, the jungle. Yes, and the fine, but the finance minister objects. Yeah. But what a surprise. It, <laughs> the finance yeah. minister would object to taking all the money and taking it off to some weird right. place. Right, how was that? that? <laughs> yeah, he just got shot. Okay, he was killed immediately. Yeah. And then there was the counting minister who looked at the, no, who, who you know, re released the numbers. Yeah. Okay, those numbers are pretty unfavorable. Yeah, so he and, gets shot too. Yeah, right. Yes, so and it's 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 like the standard guy who's gotten high on his own power, and anybody who who opposes him is an enemy, and you yes. kill him. Well, but yes, but not standard. He's this is next level. This is next level crazy. This is paranoid. Yes. Uh, Mind rotted by by, by drugs, drugs and yeah. possibly by venereal disease. Right, and he would he would set a table. He would insist that they would set a table for you know twenty people and put food at every plate. And he would sit there. Nobody else is there. <laughs> and apparently, all the other plates were for all the people that he'd killed. And he would <laughs> and be he would lecture. Them. <laughs> he would be like lecturing the ghosts of the dead people on why he had to kill them and why they really needed to. Uh, Go away. Oh my goodness. Well now now you know why you're not here. <laughs> That's my food. So Eat your food. <laughs> <laughs> so he of course his family is in charge of everything, mm -hmm. uh, including his nephew, who's in charge of the military. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, seems like when things are going badly for the president. Keep your eye on the guy who's in charge of the military. Yes. Yes. And so now he's so now he's taken all of his money, uh, I mean all of the country's money, and he's moved out of the capital into a jungle fortress, like yeah. back where his hometown is. Yeah. Right. And he's got all these paramilitary, all these military guys guarding him, and apparently he's not even paying them or something. Something oh, yeah. weird is going exactly. on. Exactly. So right yeah. now they go and they go. Uh, you know, you're 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 literally sitting on top of all the money, all of the money, and my guys haven't been paid in three months. Yeah. And he kills them too. Yeah. Which I mean, what a brilliant idea. Yeah. You just couldn't give them a wheelbarrow for <laughs> just to pay off the guys who were guarding you. Yeah. Anyway, so the nephew and, and you know a small army or whatever they come in and he escapes into the jungle and they finally catch him. Right. And there he is with a couple of suitcases. And they and put him the on trial. Uh, he burned it. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's a big he heaping put, fire. Of, <laughs> put it all in a big <laughs> heap and burned the money. <laughs> the money that he couldn't fit in a couple of suitcases. Right. And that so then they have a trial, but in the trial he's like saying, "You guys were all in on this." Because, because, oh, well, one, one, thing, know, one, which is, which one is thing we have the only the most sensible thing the guy said in a long time. Yeah. Well, one of the things we didn't cover is in his whole process of decolonizing his country, he basically corrupted the entire legal system. He got yeah. rid of he got rid of the law. Yeah. He got rid of the judges. Yeah. He put people in charge who would do exactly what he said. So the whole legal system was a joke. And so now. You're trying to try this guy 
for his crimes, and you really don't have a legal system with which to do it. Yes. And they, br they bring him in, and so they, they decide they're going to do a military tribunal, and they bring him in, and he's just sitting there saying, yeah, you guys were here when I did all this kind of stuff. What are you complaining about? Yeah. And they said, shut your mouth. <laughs> we're, we've got, uh, but he had this cult of personality had, had they have reverted from the colonizers mm -hmm. back to the witch doctors. Yeah. And now he, he, they're, they're too concerned that he would haunt them from his grave <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, so right. nobody would, they couldn't get executioners. Right. They had to bring in a team of Moroccans. Yeah. To get rid the of The Moroccans are like, all right, we'll do it. Yeah, sure. Fine. <laughs> Where's the check? <laughs> First, what? Well, yeah, why is this money singed around the edges? <laughs> <laughs> so, so they bring it to Moroccans, they kill him, and the nephew takes power. And surprise, surprise, this is 1979, just so we get the numbers down here. Surprise, surprise, and he is still in power today and is the longest ruling leader on the planet. Uh, well, I get the longest ruling president because the president, the queen, I think. Queen okay, England, yeah, queen of point. England, I think, was longer than him. Yeah, but longest longest ruling president. So, what do we learn from so all this? Of this? Tia, this is Teodoro Obiang Nguema, <laughs> something else. So, so yes. So, as he takes over, so uh, so the country's in ruins. Mm -hmm. This guy's this this guy and these people aren't all that much better than. Yeah, but you'd, you'd wonder just, if they don't just say, "Hey, Spanish, could you please come back?" Well, they find oil. What do you think they? Who, who do you think got the oil out of the ground? Right. Yeah. Not not the people who had no education system. So yeah. they called probably the Brits and the Australians and the Americans right. and said, "Can you come get this oil out?" Then they turned the lights back on with, mm -hmm. you know, some of the money, and uh, and then. Just, hoarded the rest of it. Or but the good news is, is they the got rid of the colonizers. Yes, you see? <laughs> exactly. That's a very good point. Yeah. And see how much better we all, they exactly. all are. Exactly. Oh, yeah. They don't have those, over, except now that, of course, the, the engineers who were back in there yeah. fixing the mess that they broke. Yeah, let's kill those guys because they're, they're following the colonizer mentality. <laughs> yeah. So at least, the, right. So at least the, the nephew was the, less of a decolonizer, I yes. imagine. But the question, is, so well, now let's get up to modern American. Okay. So back right. to yeah, we how we how we started this day with. Yeah. It's like the, what the heck is decolonization? What are, what are, what are they talking about? Uh, you know the uh, the university children and the you know ethnic studies professors. Yeah. What what exactly are they talking about? Near near as I can tell, what they're saying is get rid of white Western values, because. Because the fact of the matter is, everybody has colonized everybody for all of human history, right? The, the in Africa, Ghana, Mali, the Songhai Empire, the Zulu Kingdom, and Ethiopia all colonized other areas. In Asia, the Mongol Empire, the Ming and Qing dynasties in China, the Japanese Empire, the Maurya and Gupta empires in India, and the Khmer <laughs> Empire in Cambodia all colonize other areas. So if we're talking about decolonization, why is it always, always. getting rid of white Western values? Only. Why isn't it getting rid of Mongol values, getting rid of Chinese values, getting rid of Japanese values, getting rid of, you know, right? I mean, yeah, exactly. We, we, we talked about this a little bit about the, uh, the Gaza protesters and, you know, return the land or whatever. Mm -hmm. Where, this is the, the history of mankind. Uh, all the borders that you can see on a map yeah. were probably done because of war, because, because of conquest. Yes, but the only conquest that we're worried about is is white, white people Westerners. Goes. Yes. So th basically, the whole decolonization ethos is racist. It's against white Western values and. Okay, fine. Be against white Western values, but why can't you also be against all these other colonizers who did all this other stuff? Yeah, right. Who 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 sprung up out of the ground on the the, the and in, in the land and said, "This is ours and it's ours forever, and nobody can take it." Well, I don't these like sweeping generalizations about you know mankind aren't very good, but there is one that's pretty good, which is 
if you can keep your land, if you could fight for your land, defend your land, you can keep it. You can keep it. That's and right. That's about how it works. That's the that's the way it's worked forever. And when and, people say when these decolonizers, that's, that's for all. That's for the browns and the blacks and all kinds of colored people. Yes. So when when these people have in their little woke staff meetings come in and say, you know, I, I'm in on Iroquois land or whatever. Yeah. Well, okay. The Iroquois stole it from who? Who stole it from who? I know it. I who hear stole somebody from, who? from right in in that thing go. Where'd the Iroquois get it? <laughs> right. Uh, moving on. Right. Yeah. Now, now in the Americas, you do actually have the prospect of humans coming in for the first time. <laughs> you know, m- maybe twenty thousand years, something like that, coming in, finding virgin land, and take. So, okay, great. Are, so those are, guys are, and are those same people still on that land <laughs> no. in, in 1620? No, no, no. no. <laughs> so, so maybe those guys weren't colonizers. But then immediately after that, you had somebody else <laughs> the, come along. The next wave of people that came <laughs> yes, across came that in, barren killed strength. those people. They're and like, took, shoot, there's already people here. All right, well, guess we better kill them. I guess we're gonna have to kill them, or we have no place to live. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So, so this idea that like anybody living anywhere, anywhere on the planet, just sprang up from somewhere and found the land and lived there, and they have, and nonsense. they have, and they have a permanent right to it. Yeah. For, until the end of time. Right. So um, I was reading "Decolonize Everything." Some uh, first-year master's student at Harvard Divinity School mm-hmm. is got. She's got herself a podcast. Okay. Which is the most important thing. Of sure. Do people exactly. do? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And she says, "Go uh, home and I'll ask you to read this for me." But before you do, let me. Can I read the first half of a sentence? Sure. Yeah. So to tell us, to, this is just like the introduction to let you know what she's going to be doing in this podcast. Right. Yeah. Uh, which uh, and this this is uh, podcasting as sacred listening and collective liberation. Yeah, lovely. Okay, well you think sure. you know where this is going. Yeah. Uh, so this first half sentence is, while I am reluctant to define the term. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. This this is you've got this. The whole thing is about <laughs> decolonization. But I'm not going to tell you what it means <laughs> because I'm not quite sure well, what. I'm, I mean, I'm, and, I'm and wondering, you, and it seems like this is at the center. This is at the center of your, uh, of your being, because she is passionate about decolonial spirituality, particularly through the Latinx exploration and reclamation of earth-based ancient practices. What is so, earth? What is an earth-based I practice? I don't know like, what any of that means. Well, all, I, I know what it should mean. It should mean get rid of all of your Western medicine. <laughs> Right. Right? And then you yeah. can go... And never you, go to the dentist. Never. Uh, it's things like anesthesia. I know. Tui. Antibiotics. No. 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 None of that. Because uh, this is something that has to do with decolonization. You know, there's another thing I want to mention about here. The, the people who use the word sacred, I think, I think are probably usually the people who don't believe in anything sacred. And, it's, Podcasting as sacred listening. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Yes. By the way, everyone, you, you receive a special blessing for listening to this episode because it's sacred. Just by the way. Okay. Well, all right. She's going she's gonna to do her best. It's not going to be easy. Okay. But And she's already told you she's not really sure how this is going to go. But okay, she's so here's attempt. my best attempt. This is my best attempt. Decolonization is an active and ongoing process of dismantling white supremacy and all colonial institutions and ideologies that preserve and perpetuate domination over indigenous and colonized peoples. Decolonization is resistance to the deeply seated consciousness and practice of colonization, past and present, and the pursuit of liberation for land, humans, and the more than human realm. I don't know what that is. (laughs) While I focus on my own work in the Americas, decolonization is an ethic that goes beyond borders while remaining in relationship with the specific concrete realities at hand. You know what this reminds wow, me of? Wow, that, go ahead, please. Yeah, Jeez, this, this, me, I, I oh had this God, job, that that, so had this job many years ago where I worked for this woman who's a lame. very, very educated woman and very accomplished. But she would, when, when she would talk to you, she would say all these words and you would think, I know what all those words are. But but I I don't know what you're use, what you're saying with yeah. those words, and I was I was very confused and I was very upset. So I went and talked to the, to this guy who was sort of my mentor. They in this company you had a mentor to help you understand. And I said, 
I said, you know, when I when I talk to her and she says all this stuff, I don't know what she's talking about. And he just laughed, smacked me on the back and said, everybody has that problem. Uh, yes. Nobody understands what she's talking about ever. Yes. And but, that's what but, I get. But from... that could get you a TED Talk and it, exactly. could, get you, uh, it could get you published. And yeah. And it can get you... A PhD. A PhD. <laughs> that's right. Yes. Yes. So, uh, all right. Whatever that was, mm -hmm. why is it, one of the things that I, under, I, I wonder about that, why is decolonization a matter of dismantling white supremacy? Because hold on, she, she, she said beyond our borders, she, she said if she wanted to just limit it to... Uh, to Western yeah, stuff. Yeah, she says, I'm, I'm only talking, I'm only, I'm not really concerned about other decolonization. She said, where's the, where's the papers? she said, uh... No, no, no! Taking it beyond these borders. Yeah, oh, but really, but okay. Well, let's what we've, well, let's do that. We've already established that colonization isn't unique to white people. Yeah, and you just black, want, brown, you just, yellow, and everybody else have done it. Yeah, so I don't know what other borders. She, 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 oh, she, I guess she yeah. only means colonization of Europeans. Yeah. Now Africa. here's another here's another question I've got for you. So. If decolonization, I mean, the classic decolonization is you're sitting around in this woke meeting at some company and somebody says, well, you know, I, I, I don't believe in Western values. I've decided to live out my actual heritage as an Iroquois whatever. And I'm, I'm living according to Iroquois values. Okay. And yeah, everybody goes, yay, hey, 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 you're living Iroquois values. Okay. Why is it okay for him to live Iroquois values, but it's not okay for me to live white Western values? How about Comanche values? Right. Yeah. How about that? Which just steamrolled their way through other Indian tribes, taking whatever they want. Right. What, well, that's why? okay because that's because that's your that's your thing. That's your, that's your heritage. So what? I don't understand when they say, you know, white Western values are not the default. Okay, they're not the default for whom? You're going to say that it is that Iroquois values are the default for this poor, this person, or you know Congo values are the default for this person. But why can't white Western values be the default for me? Yeah, well, I don't understand yeah. that. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I guess well, I, well, I, I guess what they've been saying is that should not be the uh, default value of the United States. So, are you going to have no? Default. I mean, are you going to have? Is, we're, we're going yeah, to no, say we well, have no values. We have no values as a culture. We're just we don't believe anything. <laughs> just willy nilly, yeah. and well, that's going to take you down another, another <laughs> road. <laughs> another road. Yes. Uh, so, okay. <clears throat> Fast. So apparently, well, I don't know what decolonization means according according to her. Right. But what I've seen. I've seen people remove paintings, right? Pull down statues, statues, right. rename streets, right? Rename schools. Uh, and I say, you fake ass radical, fake revolutionary. Uh, is, is that it? Is, is that is that all you got? You're right. you're gonna you're gonna have you're gonna have Zoom meetings and you're going to uh, have podcasts and write books. Why don't you look to a real decolonizer? A real decolonizer, like Macias. Yes, and so when you say when you what, what when you say decolonize Harvard, I say do it. Yeah, exactly. Get I rid say of, do get it. rid of medical care. So what would, yeah, get what, rid what of would that look like? Let's just say, right, say the president and all, all the heads up. What you know? What these tamper t ten per tantrum tossing twenty somethings. I think they might be right. Yeah, we're so, going to decolonize Harvard. Okay, yes. So number so one, let's throw away all. All the of books. you go home. Yeah, because the school's closed. Right, the school's closed. So we're get rid of all, all the architecture, all the all the medicine. Yeah. All the all the uh, anesthesia. We're going to get rid of everything. Sorry, there's nothing left. What 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 about Harvard is left if you're going to decolonize it? Yes. No. Uh, so oh no no. no. You mean your virtue? Just want a virtue signal? Get credit for that for your ethnic studies. Uh, you know, they'll probably give you three credits for showing up sure. for the yeah. uh, for, for the rally. Yeah. Uh, but I want all of the other benefits, including your cell phone and where you, and the car that you drove to get here, right. the heating and air conditioning that you have. Yes. 
I want all of those things from from Western. The, the very fact that the, Harvard means something on your resume. Yeah. Right. Which and, is which is which hopefully colonial values. Yes, and hopefully anybody with any sense would say, "Oh, you were at the decolonization rally, not higher." <laughs> despite despite your Harvard. W wouldn't it, wouldn't it be nice if people just said, "Oh, you went to that school? No, that's garbage. We're not going to accept your uh, your degree from that school." Yeah, what, what what would be the downside of, of them going, uh, okay, all of the students at the I Hate Jews rally yeah. are expelled right. because you, you know, this is this is clearly a violation. Look at the, here, here's the, you saw the handbook yeah. in, in your freshman year. Yeah. It's, all of you are expelled. What would be the downside of that? Do you, do you think that they wouldn't have enough students to fill the, the, the halls? There's only a, all the STEM kids, I mean, there's only a, Percentage-wise, of the thirty thousand people that are there, right? We're only talking about five hundred morons. Hmm. Uh, so yeah. you get rid of all of them, and then all the parents are, go are going. Thank you very much. <laughs> right? Yeah, right? Right? I mean, how many? You, you, what would be the ratio between the kids, kids kicked out, and parents are going? You know what? I'd rather I, have I, my kid at that school so, than away from that school. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I think the the downside would be that probably. A quarter to a third of the faculty are on the side of the idiot demonstrators. Yep, that would be a so, plus two. I mean, yeah, so get rid of them too. Yeah, you get rid of them too. Yeah, and then right, and then people who want to send their kids to an actual elite school would go. That's hey. the one for me. Yeah, exactly. They mean they mean business. Yeah, this is this they is, don't put up with this, this is, crap. This is Yale's chance to step in because I haven't heard Yale's. I haven't heard Yale's name mentioned. I've heard Columbia, yeah. Penn, right. I've heard Harvard, right, and Yale just go. Go ahead, do it. Yeah. Walk out of class. Go ahead, try Walk it. Walk out of class. Try it. See how long you stay here. Yeah. Yeah. And then everybody's going, "Oh, I guess I know which one where where, where my kids belong." That would be that would be nice. I mean, you know, in, yeah. In, if we weren't in upside down clown world, yes, that's how things would work. Yes. So I would say, if you look at Macias, and just because he was dumb, loud, violent monster whose <laughs> mind was ravaged by drugs and syphilis, doesn't mean we shouldn't listen to him. Oh, of course, yes. I mean, that's exactly the kind of person we should be listening well, to. Well, I mean, I would, if you look at you know pro Gaza rallies, it does kind of mm -hmm. kind of tracks. <laughs> it, does, it does track. So anyway, uh, kids. Well, oh, if, so if you're going to, so the, the real point is, if you're going to decolonize, yeah. go the whole way. Yeah. Well, don't, don't, don't let's, forget this half measure Let's stuff. do this. Yeah. Do it for real. Come on. Do it for real. Get rid of all the Western I mean, white I mean, stuff. What do you all mean? Because I have no idea from, from what Crow Hill just read. I have no idea what you mean. If you actually take actual steps like Macias, who was the real deal, yeah. then well, I'll know, oh, that's what you mean. That's by what you mean. But yeah. Okay, okay. well, at least, you, you know, at least you've got a set of principles that you're living by. Right. You yeah. fake ass <laughs> revolutionaries. <laughs> so, so how is uh, Equatorial Guinea doing? Uh, I would say it's discovered oil that somebody else dug out of the the ground, ground for them. them yeah and so they're probably doing okay now i just happen to come across the uh richest african leaders okay okay we got number one mohammed the sixth from morocco he's worth 2.5 billion on his four hundred eighty thousand dollar a year salary that would take quite a little quite a time to get yeah, 2.5 yeah. billion well not as much 000. as uh, number two okay Ali Bongo Andimba, right. Gabon, right. one billion dollars on a salary of sixty-five. How long would it take? <laughs> sixty-five, on a 65 grand. grand salary. That would be a that would thousands of years. Yeah, yeah. Well, because you're not a very good investor, I guess. I guess, yeah. And, and here we go. Here's a boy. Number three. Teodoro Albiang Nguema Mbasoga. Equatorial Guinea, baby. Yes. Six hundred million dollars. Now we don't know what his. Uh, well, I think I, what I, what I heard was that his wife was selling all this cool macrame stuff out of the garage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She she's uh, on uh, SD. So yeah, really, yeah. Yes, right. yes. She's got an SD site that's really bringing it in. That's right. Yeah, selling and, all that yeah, stuff. Just to round out four and five, we've got uh, the Kenyan leader at five hundred million, followed by Rwanda. Yeah. Uh, I mean, really? Million. I mean, they even make five hundred million dollars a year. Know. I don't know. And his salary is a sweet eighty-five thousand yeah. dollars. 
Well, you know, it's not like our politicians don't come in relatively poor and then well, become I, millionaires, I mean, you know. Yeah. Uh, Joe Biden has never had a real job in his life, and he's got what, like five mansions? Yeah, yeah he's got plenty of money. Yeah, yeah. and, and it has just, nothing to well, do with Ukraine or anything like that. No, zero. Yeah. It just, it just such an excellent book writer and yeah. uh, speaker fees. And he invests well. He invests well. <laughs> yes, yeah. he does. All right, can I just we got uh, just two more minutes here about. Uh, so when this thing gets decolonized, where am I supposed to go? Okay, I think. The easiest way to look at this is the all-important sacred year of 1619, which is when the world fell apart. Okay. The 1619 project. Yeah. Before that, everyone is exactly where they were supposed to be. The Europeans Mm. were in Europe, Mm -hmm. and the Indians were here, and nobody, everybody was in their homeland. So I'm looking at that, that's 400 years is about 20 generations, and you can't just follow your last name. Yeah. What's that? That's... The definition of the patriarchy. Yeah, my well, that's well. For one thing, last names are usually passed on patrilineally. Yeah. But also, my last name was different back then than it is now. Okay, so it might be a little bit tough for you to find out where, where you're supposed to be. Yeah. But uh, so, so you're you you have two parents, and then they right. have four parents, and two. So that's an exponential kind of a thing. Right. So two to the twentieth is a million forty eight thousand. <laughs> yeah, that's how many ancestors I have. Oh, 400 years, 400 years ago. So, uh, so which one, which one? Yeah. So, so, if how, you, so if I'm supposed to go back, if I need to go back to the, before the sacred year of 1619, okay. because that's where I actually belong I instead see. of be standing around on people's stolen land. Yeah. Because, because no land was stolen before in 1619. Because all those people were from the same little town in, uh, <laughs> in well, or maybe I have a million choices to choose from. And I just trace it all back, find all one million of them, and I can pick any one of them. I guess is that how it goes? Maybe. I mean, I'm. I, well, maybe no, she just. There's no logical or sense to any of this. No, so. I, I think I, I think the 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 decolonization is more like yeah, like Macias. Uh, you just get murdered. Yeah. And the river. Bas- the basically, you just do what you want to do, take the drugs that you want to take. And uh, kill the people that oppose you. And that's, okay. that's hold, wait, hold on now. So I was trying to find a picture for decolonization, and I just took, I just did one little one little snapshot. Right. And so, but I okay. So these are the different things you can decolonize. Okay, you can decolonize love. Yep. Wellness. Yep. Wow, that's not a good idea. Wealth. Yep. Probably not a good idea. Education. Right. Archaeology. You can decolonize your diet, and you can decolonize chocolate. Wow. So, you know what this tells me? Decolonization is nothing but a marketing term. Okay. It's this, it's if whatever you're doing that everybody's already done. And you want to attract a woke market. Yes. Audience. You, exactly. You decolonize it. You put decolonize in front of it and now you can write a book and give that's, a speech. That's genius. I've I got to use this in my business. I've got, I've got to start <laughs> decolonizing yeah. all the, th- I'm, okay. That's it. I, I got to work it into so my. They're not going, you're not going to get a slot speaking. Until I decolonize it. If you put decolonize in front, yes, Darren Dang Teed. Decolonize customer data platforms. That's 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 what we're gonna. Oh, do. No, seriously, that would yeah. I mean, that actually would do it. Yeah, but I but I, then I, then it occurred to me that or if you put global warming oh in gosh. front of it, if you said uh, well, uh, if you said decolonize customer data platforms to stop global warming. <laughs> yes, yes, or you could just do. Uh, the or or harm caused by yes so uh the harm the uh, harm caused by caused by the colonization of yeah, yeah. Of, of, oh, no no the, no no uh, uh, wellness and the harm caused by global warming love and the harm caused by global warming so it it's it, again it's just a buzz term yeah yeah. Okay. Well, All right. so this decolonization stuff, you know, I, in preparation for the show, I, I listened to a bunch of videos. I watched some Ted, I listened to some Ted talks. I did a bunch of stuff and my overall, um, my overall reaction was these people are all morons and I wouldn't put any of them in charge of a field of hay. I mean, they, they were just idiots. Yeah. So, because they're all they're right. Because they're 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 speaking like this. Yeah. And 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 people. Oh, 
Ooh. Yeah, it's Emperor's New Clothes. That's it's deep. Like, oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. It is the Emperor's New Clothes. Yeah. But th- we do have the question that, you know, once upon a time, we we were talking about the Bastard of Africa. Oh, uh, Leopold II. Uh, Leopold II. Yes. And his, no, the way he, he way he dealt with the Congo, which yeah. was awful. Terrible man. Absolutely terrible man. You know, if, if there's a hell, then he's there. Uh, but... Uh, you know, mm, I see. I, I feel like I know where you're going. M- maybe he's maybe he's standing on this guy's head. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Macias in in Guema, uh might take might take the prize. Yeah, I'm sorry, Leopold. Yeah. No, no wonder you're Leopold the second. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, you're, you're not. The, you're not the top bastard. No, anymore. Leopold the second. You are the second worst person yes. to ever <laughs> ever populate this planet. Yes, you, so you've been beaten. <laughs> yes, yes. Your influence on Africa is only slightly less awful. Yes. Than our guy, but he's but the legacy lives on. I'm sure his his nephew uh, you know, doing wonderful uh, things. Yeah, we'll there. see. All right. All right. Okay, hey, there we go. That's enough of that. Cheers. Thanks so much for listening to Beer and Conversation with Pigweed and Crow Hill. Remember to visit us at pigweedandcrowhill.com or send us an email at pigweedshow at gmail.com.